1980s, no cell phone on me. Ugh, it was awful. <laughs> You're from the future, so... <laughs> Well, all right. So I think we delayed the inevitable long enough. So let's get into the conversation of who done it better. Only the second edition that we've actually done this. The last time we did this, we talked about Beauty and the Beast. This time around, we're talking about the classic movie Be- Sleeping Beauty versus the recent uh, reboot live action uh, Maleficent. So basically, what's going to happen is that we're going to try and give a bit of a brief plot synopsis of both movies. I'll be doing Sleeping Beauty and. Victory Bell will be doing Maleficent, giving you guys basically the idea of what happened with each movies. We'll kind of go into the discussion about some of the major key differences, what we liked about the movies, what we didn't like about the movies, and then kind of give our final thoughts to close it off. So, all right, so going through the brief synopsis of Sleeping Beauty. Okay, how do I indeed start with this? So basically, it just talks about how a princess was being born, and she's the most, you know, I guess unique in all the land. Three fairies come in. Uh, I have to get... Jeez, oh, I have to get their names. I have to remember the names of the three, three fairies because they are basically like some of the key components of this movie. Uh, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. There we go. Uh, they distribute gifts to the princess of beauty, of song. And just as Meriwether's about to give her a gift, here comes Maleficent saying, oh, before the sun sets on her 16th birthday, she'll prick her... Uh, finger on a thread needle and die. Um, Meriwether said, nope, it's not going to be a, uh, it's not going to be death, but sleep and true love's first kiss will, you know, break the spell. Uh, it evolves from there where the fairies say, let's just hide her out in this cottage in the forest. And hopefully Maleficent won't find her even before the whole 16th birthday deal happens in which, they do when it goes to the day of the 16th birthday celebration, they send her out saying, saying we need more berries or something like that. Cause they want to create this great, you know, party for her. And while she's while Aurora Rose sleeping beauty is out and about, she meets Prince Philip unbeknownst to her. And it's kind of one of those love at first sight kind of deals, you know, what you would expect, but she comes back expecting him to be back uh, later that evening but when she comes back, she sees not only that, you know, her quote-unquote mothers have, you know, created her a dress, a nice birthday cake, but also do the big reveal that she is actually the princess and she is already betrothed, which kind of devastates her. But during that time, also Maleficent finds out that she is in hiding and she finds a way to draw Aurora Rose to, of course, that threat, that needle where she pricks her finger and she quote-unquote dies but, of course, she only falls into a deep sleep. Uh, the fairies decide, you know what, okay, we're going to have everybody fall asleep before something bad is about to happen. Unbeknownst to them, Prince Philip actually was talking about meeting this girl in the forest, and they find out Rose is the one that she that he's talking about. So they try to go back and find him, but unfortunately he got kidnapped by Maleficent, and they go and rescue him. And a little kind of sub point here, uh, Maleficent reveals her grand plan of, you know, keeping Philip in the prison until he's like old and withered and, you know, riding off his steed into the, you know, to the rescue to, you know, give true love's first kiss that prove that love conquers all in a very sarcastic tone. Uh, I, I will say that this was kind of one of those things that, well, I'll talk about this a little later. Uh, the fairies helped Philip escape, giving him a shield and a sword. He battles back to the castle, but only meets Maleficent, who has the ever-so-classic line of, now you'll have to deal with me and all the powers of hell in which she turns into a dragon. (sighs) Honestly, I think that was one of the craziest lines I'll ever remember from a Disney movie, because you never hear the word hell being put in any classic Disney movie. Uh, Prince Prince Philip and uh, Maleficent, uh, they fight. Of course, Philip wins. Kisses Aurora Rose, awaking her from her slumber, and they all live happily ever after. Kind of a basic Disney movie and kind of a Disney uh, basic plot to what you would expect from a lot of the medieval time stories. So all in all, it's still a nice, timeless classic, and it's kind of, it's it's interesting to say the least. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Victory Bell, who's going to tell you guys about the plot of Maleficent, because I believe that she's the one who's going to give it due justice, considering she does role pl- cosplay as Maleficent. So, by all means, take it away. Role play? Ah. 
Well, <laughs> I mean, there's one episode of Dead Bears Dark Coffin Classics, but we're not going to go into that episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, Maleficent has some of the same storyline that Sleeping Beauty has, but obviously it went with the Disney's new theme of let's explain why the villain is what the way the villain is. So instead of following around the princess, we follow around the villain. So Maleficent is basically you start her as a young fairy princess, and she's a fairy with beautiful hawk-like wings with claws and, and, and horns, and she lives in the fairy world of the forest that humans aren't allowed to be in. Eventually, there's a child, a male child, that comes into this area, and she helps and plays with him, and they basically are kind of friendly with one another. Um, and usually humans aren't supposed to go here, so Maleficent kind of helped him and got him back home. And they end up meeting and kind of falling in love, and and it was a, a cute little love story at first. I don't really recall what happened. Oh, 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 yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. So then he happens to be a prince of this kingdom that's outside of the forest, and in order to win, was he a prince? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm backlashing. I'm back, back grabbing. I believe, I, I believe that, he was. I'm, I don't think he was actually. I think he was uh, just a servant boy. But in order, um, the king was sick. The king is dying. The king says, "If you bring me the wings of this fairy beast, you'll become the king." And so. He has to choose between his love for Maleficent or his love for power. And so he asks Maleficent to come meet him for a night and they'll talk about things and whatnot. So they basically meet, they sleep like next to one another. It doesn't, of course, say that they sleep together. It's a Disney movie. But they, they fall asleep and when she awakens, he used some sort of saturated blade to chop her beautiful her beautiful hawk wings off and deliver them to the king. And he was able to basically become the king then. So he gained the crown. She lost her most valued possession, which was her fairy wings that she used to protect the forest. And so she became very bitter. When he announced that he got married and was having a child and everyone was coming to, you know, praise this child, Maleficent thought, this is my time to get back at him. He's so happy. He's in power. So she goes, just as, you know, Nate started his story. He, he She goes to give her gift to the princess, and her gift is, of course, a curse. It's the same curse that we talked about. And so as a, a scared father that he was, he sent Sleeping Beauty or Aurora, Princess Aurora, to live with these fairies who are supposed to protect her from Maleficent. And throughout her whole life, we kind of get to view her growing up as a child, and these fairies that were taking care of her really don't know how to take care of a human at all. So Maleficent and her crow raven friend, that was like a male who turned into a crow once in a while or something, I don't know, um, kind of helped Aurora grow up because... She was so obnoxious, crying throughout the forest that Maleficent just gave in and, like, gave her food, gave her water, made sure she didn't get hurt. Um, So almost helped raise her like a mother. And as the story progresses, she's getting asleep. Uh, Aurora is growing older to the point where she's about to become, you know, 16, I think it was, when she was going to get prick her finger. So... Maleficent started to try to, you know, oh, maybe I was wrong about this curse. I want to try to break the curse before it happens. And she couldn't. Her curse was way too strong. So all in all, basically what happens is at the end, she attempts to save Aurora from this thing. Aurora obviously gets fricked. She falls into a deep sleep. Everybody's, woe is us, woe is us. We need the prince. We need a prince. So the prince comes, kisses her on the lips. Nothing happens because he didn't love her because it wasn't true love. Because guess what? True love doesn't just happen. And so everyone's like, oh, she's dead. Wah, wah, cry, cry. But then Maleficent 
go, comes in and is very saddened by the fact that she did this to a, to a young girl who actually she decided to kind of mother and she felt as though she loved her so she kissed her on the lips to say goodbye to the, the princess because she was dead um, and Maleficent's kiss actually awakened the princess and Princess Aurora awakened she's alive now and everybody lives happily ever after and Maleficent got her wings back so it was all good and the king ends up dying of course because he was a, a prick for real so that was the difference in there. They kind of made it more about a loving relationship of somebody who cursed somebody and forgiveness type of thing. Yeah, um, you, you do hit the nail on the head about, you know, obviously one of the main differences with the two movies is that Sleeping Beauty focuses more on the story of Aurora Rose, while Maleficent more focuses on the story, as you said, and how Disney's trying to do it is more on you know, the villain as to why she is, why she is, and why, you know, what's her motivations and everything like that. And I like to just say offhand that, again, I've said this since day one that they brought this out. Angelina Jolie was the perfect person to play Maleficent. There was no doubt in my mind about that. She had the, I mean, you know, from her face to her attitude, she just knew how to play the role and just do an amazing job at it. I actually watched a bit of a clip of that uh, movie earlier just to see how again Maleficent looked and how Angelina Jolie played it I'm just like again there's nobody else I could see that could play that role better than she could she just had that you know charm of just being able to have that uh dur during that scene where she's you know just bestowing the gift she has of course you know I was kind of surprised to not have an invitation and, and of course the king just says you weren't invited and of course she just looks like defeated like oh and then she just goes from like this defeated look to just this charming smile of evil of just like yeah i was gonna show up anyway it didn't matter i'm like yeah only angelina jolie could do that so there was no doubt that I was gonna be that um i think another main one was definitely the roles were definitely reversed as you definitely mentioned uh sleeping beauty was you know maleficent was the main villain because of her because of what she did and definitely showed that that was where they were going I uh, Maleficent, uh, she was not the villain. She was just kind of more misunderstood. She was, as you said, you know, the caretaker. She was just th there to, you know, really start, I guess, helping uh, Aurora become the adult that she was and eventually, you know, save her as you know. And, of course, the evil during this was actually Aurora's father, which, you know, is it's definitely hard for me to kind of adjust to that i i don't know uh was that kind of a, an interesting adjustment for you seeing you know the roles kind of reversed in both the movies um i think that's what made them totally different movies so i liked that they did that i also could definitely see like that's why a fairy queen magician like herself was so scorned by this kingdom. I mean, there could also be other reasons. Obviously, there's the usual tendency of fairies guarding forests and humans wanting the forest chopped down for farmland and other agricultural type of things that um, in the, you know, Middle Ages fantasy worlds, they always have that conflict of, protecting a forest versus humans, you know. So, I, I don't know. I, I kind of liked, I, I liked what they did because I'm somebody who doesn't like to see the same story done over and over again. It bores me. I like the same themes, but I don't like the same story. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Uh, one thing I did not like entirely when it came to like these two different movies was how they portrayed the fairies in the new one. I mean, the old one, it was great because, you know, they actually had some intelligence and they were actually trying and it didn't seem like, you know, they didn't care about the kid, uh, Aurora's at all. They actually were showing love and care and concern. And then when you get into the Maleficent version, yeah. Um, I, it's kind of undescribable, in my opinion, how they were portrayed. Because I remember just watching these, and I'm just thinking, 
what? Why? Because it just, it feels like,